Uh, Beavis? Where are we? This feels... This feels more awkward. Feels very... Loserish. Wait a second. Holy crap, I'm fat. <laughs> okay. I didn't think that, that was good. <laughs> God dang it. <laughs> I missed an opportunity right there. As soon as you went, boy, yo, 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 I should have gone, ha <laughs> 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 uh, Beavis and Butthead. What is there to say about these two except for... Good, stupid humor. Good, like, yes. Good, stupid humor that knew its place... Still, I think in some cases still has a place in modern America. Because, you know, the new Beavis and Butthead movie that came out not it's too really long. really depends on who you are. And yes. What you're willing to find funny. Yes. Well, you know who didn't find it amusing? Some, some like, ultra, like, ultra offended redneck motherfucker up in West Virginia. You know, near our neck of the woods. Uh, Basically, he's like, he's like. Man, I was watching them dang old cartoons on TV, man, dang old Porky's butthole. <laughs> and, like, and, and from hearing that complaint, <laughs> Mike Judge came up with the character Boomhauer. Uh, yeah. Just from the voice alone. Oh, God. And the fact that Mike Judge, st I think Mike Judge still says he still has that voicemail of that guy. Leaving that angry voicemail. Oh, uh, that, that. So my mom <clears throat> always didn't want me to watch Beavis and Butthead, and yet she found it freaking hilarious whenever I would do a Cornholio impression. I guess that me. Obviously, I learned about it. I am Cornholio. From, uh, my next door neighbor Levi, who was older than me and did watch it. <laughs> so. I need TV for my bug hole. God, so back in the 90s, Beavis and Butthead was everywhere. Like, they were a pop cultural like mecca for a lot of people out there. Not only that, they were some of the first reactions. Mm -hmm. Like, especially on mainstream TV, because they would watch the music videos and they'd be doing reactions to the music videos. <clears throat> Some of my favorite ones is when they were watching Pantera, and they were just like, "Like, dude, these guys freaking rule." <laughs> I was just like, "Yes, they do." Oh, oh, Instagram! Someone just followed me. They'd be watching like other stuff. They'd be like, "The fuck?" Yeah, I think they were watching Sinead O'Connor. Just be like, "Uh, gonna <laughs> say, uh, do you think she has cancer?" Uh. Like, God. <clears throat> Considering that Sinead O'Connor's dead now, it's kind of sad, but oh well. It is what it is. So, Beavis and Butthead do America. <clears throat> the first feature length film starring Beavis and Butthead. And I can't believe, I couldn't believe how good it was. It was because I didn't think Beavis and Butthead would be good enough to. Hold out a full length film. But they did. And they did great. So. <clears throat> so the Nostalgia Critic did a video about it. About Beavis and Butthead to America. Let's check it out and let's see what old Dougie Boy's got to say about it. Are you ready? I'm ready. Are you ready? I can't hear you so. I'm just going to assume you said it. I'm just going to assume that you all say. Shut the hell up and play the video. Okay. This episode brought to you by Stamps.com. Stamps. Go to the store to get stamps when you can have them printed right at home for your convenience. <laughs> you 
I still don't understand their intro credit sequence because they have all these people that I never see. And I'm just like, is that just the writing staff? No. Well, okay. These three, you know these three. They're always Obviously, in the videos. They're in like every video. You know, Doug, Malcolm, and Tamara. And then the there's Rob. Them, like, I've never fucking seen them almost. That's Rob. That's Doug's br older brother mm -hmm. who co writes a lot of the uh, stuff with him. <clears throat> and these they've appeared sparingly. As like extras in in nostalgia critics videos, but they also have their own stuff that they do. Some manage costumes, some do like props, some do editing. It's I I know that uh I know that Walter has his own has his own show. Jim does the uh does costumes I think, but yeah, <coughs> I don't know. I'm not 100% up to speed on the staff that Doug employs now. Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic Guy, remember? So you don't have to. Hey, remember in the 90s when we used to watch underqualified dumbasses review media from a couch? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's a call out on multiple <laughs> levels. Yeah, I know. <laughs> calling himself out. He's calling Beavis and Butthead out. He's calling us out. Exactly. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it so much. Oh, that's meta as fuck. <laughs> this is the movie. <laughs> in 1996, near the height of their popularity, Beavis and Butthead Do America holds two fond memories for me. One is, of course, laughing at two of my favorite animated slackers with an audience on the big screen. And two, giggling when an obvious Oscar bait movie at the time called Ghosts of Mississippi didn't get as good reviews. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. I remember someone else talking about this. Ghosts of Mississippi was chasing the Oscars that year. With, like, all the stuff that you would expect, you know, heavily racist storylines, you know, big, gaudy performances from big-name actors, all the, like, all the nines and everything. And everyone's just like, you're trying too hard. <laughs> and then this comes out and gets rave reviews, whereas Ghost of Mississippi just gets, like, forgotten. The story didn't deserve to be told, but everyone agreed it was told in a schmaltzy way. Despite having some of Hollywood's finest at the time. I would have much preferred to see a documentary on this subject rather than this Hollywood version that is well-meaning, but so safe. This is not a over a good performance. She spends most of it on the telephone saying, yeah, yeah, well, I don't believe you're really going to do it. She There's doesn't, no writing. You don't really understand what who Megar Evers was, what he did. There's just something so funny about a Rob Reiner drama with James Woods, Alec Baldwin, and Whoopi Goldberg in southern accents getting bested by Beavis and Butthead. <laughs> I was taken with their adolescent awkwardness. <laughs> bravado and vulnerability. I think there is satire of this kind of couch potato, uh, disaffected attitude. Most people thought this was going to be a film written by simpletons for simpletons about simpletons. But in fact, it was a film written by smart people for most people, but yes, still about simpletons. But yes. the truth is, Beavis and Butthead were so celebrated at the time by their young yeah, That's the thing, is Mike Judge is not at all a bad comedy writer. You no, tell, Judge you is hilarious. Judge is hilarious and like, he's... It's just Beavis and Butthead have a lot of crude, like, crass humor and stuff, you know, that you have to be able to just have a carefree attitude about to properly enjoy, in my opinion. Yeah. Well, if you don't find farts funny, like, parts of Beavis and Butthead aren't going to appeal to you, but if you think funny sounds that come from your butthole are pretty kind of humorous, then... Yeah. You know? It could have been just a If you only movie. laugh at the most intelligent jokes ever written probably don't enjoy comedy as much as most people anyways in the first place. Yeah. And it wasn't. They worked hard. Hard. <laughs> <laughs> at making the writing, timing, acting, and animation all get solid laughs. Like many have said, you have to be surprisingly smart in order to make dumb funny. But mm -hmm. what is it about the film that won so many over? Well, let's dive on in and check it out. 
<laughs> this is Beavis and Butt. My first name's Butt. <laughs> <laughs> Head to America. The film opens with a dream that, okay, let's face it, it's here for trailer fodder, but it's good trailer fodder. Hey, baby. <laughs> I'm like pretty tall. <laughs> alone is one third my body <laughs> it's true <laughs> head uh, uh, i got a big head uh, beavis wakes up butthead to show something has happened to the tv uh, someone stole it uh, 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 one of the interesting things is in the cisco and Ebert. this sucks more than anything has ever sucked before Review. Siskel swore the director of the movie was trying to help Butthead figure out what happened. This clever scene where the film's director actually tries to help the boys figure out that their missing television set has been stolen. This is clever. I think more likely this is just his point of view putting together what happened, but again, that's what's so great about getting a different take. Yeah. Look at it from an equally funny way you never thought of before. <laughs> this sucks more than anything that I've ever sucked before. <laughs> I've always loved that line. <laughs> it's so good. Yeah. It's it and it's effortlessly good because because it's Butthead who's delivering it. Yeah. And he's just he's always just like, ah, oh, dude. This is cool. Uh, I've always break. like wanted opportunities to like quote that line, but like I mean, you gotta really save it for something bad that also is not gonna come off as like insensitive. Oh god! It's that bad, you know. Oh god! So I don't really know what situation to use it in. <laughs> it's like if some, someone actually robs our house, it would be appropriate to the original context, but at the same time, I'm probably not gonna be making jokes that somebody robbed our house. You know what I mean? <laughs> I got one. You had a perfect opportunity to do this. Uh, it was after... My, you remember when my truck got repossessed because apparently the bank hadn't been receiving my payments? Yeah. And I was standing out there and I was watching it being driven away and you were standing and you walked out there beside me? <laughs> that would have been the perfect opportunity for you to say that and I would not have been mad but it's just more in character for me personally to just be like um well that sucks yeah <laughs> you know what I mean <laughs> by the way I did get it settled I literally called the bank later you know right after that paid like paid the amount that I owed and got my truck back later that day I think I remember you drove me uh to that to the lot and I got it back. Didn't they do that to you twice? Yes, and it happened because of a system error. Because that the they second didn't time fix. I came, I came over to the oh. mansion or came home. What, I can't remember. I was living there at the time. Yeah, it was. But uh, I walked in, and you were like, "Oh, hey, what's up, dude?" And I was like, "Where's your truck?" And you're like, "What? Excuse me?" <laughs> yeah, that was the second time that happened, dude. Here was the thing. It was a computer error that happened on their end twice. I wasn't the only one that this happened to. Other people had this complaint. And guess what? When when their system went down and didn't uh, withdraw payments through auto pay anymore, <clears throat> it messed everything up for everybody. So it's just there's nothing you can do except for just like twiddle your thumbs and just be like, well, this sucks. It, and guess what? It completely fucks your credit score up. That's what it did to me. Which is bullshit. It is, because it's fault. their fault. Yeah. It's role satirizing old 70s movies and shows like Starsky and Hutch. Yeah, 70s nostalgia was like what I guess 90s nostalgia is like now. Why else do you think I'm talking about this flick? Uh, Wait a minute, I don't want to go to school. They go searching for their TV and decide to steal the one from their school, but their teacher stops them. We don't need TV to entertain us. She said anus. I swear. God, Jesus. I forgot about that. Like I said, it's so stupid, but you never would actually think about it otherwise. So it's actually kind of smart at the same time. <coughs> it's making us realize how ridiculous some of the things we say are. Yeah. For instance... It's just like, when my friend pointed out to me, it's just like, dude, why do we park in driveways but drive on parkways? Yeah. It's like, it's like 
you know, those mind-bending ones where it's just like, dude, stop talking, please. There's more to this movie than just Sean Connery Jeopardy jokes. Well, funny enough, I don't think much of the audience would mind if it was all that. They accidentally break the TV, resulting in the principal expelling them. Beavis and Butthead, uh, you're both expelled! That's code for you. Yeah, small jokes are boring in a big animated film. King of the Hill prototypes, however. You know, the most important thing you can have on a camper is a good butane regulator. My dad says butane's bastard gas. I knew you were going to say it. <laughs> I knew. As soon as he said butane, I knew I had to pause because I knew that and on cue. <laughs> butane, huh? Why do I feel like Tom Anderson and Daria in this are in the same neighborhood as Elaine's bizarro friends? <laughs> ah, this crab is warm. They end up breaking Tom's TV, too, and they stumble across a hotel where I'm very thankful the censors said they get an R if they show the principal's bare ass. Not that I think showing a bare ass constitutes that, but showing his bare ass, I think does. Ugh. They go to another hotel room where a criminal <laughs> named Muddy, voiced by Bruce Willis, confuses Beavis and Butthead for assassins. Yeah, this old shtick. I'll pay you ten grand plus expenses, all payable after you do her. Yeah. Are they gonna get the secret government device that'll destroy the world too? The X5 unit is a new top secret biological weapon. Okay, this isn't the most original story, especially at that time, but what makes it unique are the leads. These plot points are usually used in liar reveal stories where we're supposed to love the clumsy liar and relate to them when they sulk in the third act after the truth comes out. That's not how Beavis and Butthead works, though. No. They're so dim and self-centered, it doesn't care if you like them. In fact, it's funnier if you don't. Any questions so far? Does she have big hooters? <laughs> yeah, you guys are funny. Let's have a drink on it, eh? <laughs> <laughs> also, I find it hilarious that Bruce Willis and Demi Moore, who I think were married at the time, you know, voices the two people trying to kill each other. And then they got divorced. Oh, gosh. <clears throat> and the fact that Bruce Willis, as of now, because of his mental illness, can't remember who Demi Moore is, that's kind of sad. Yeah. But, hey, at least they have this. It comes from what a satirical take on Gen X it is, and how the rest of the world can't comprehend anyone being so stupid, so they confuse them for being masterminds. There's no moral, just laughs. And with so many comedies hammering in an obvious lesson nowadays, sometimes just a good laugh is really welcomed. Don't let me down. They confuse us as named Muddy's wife for having sex with her, and they happily agree to take a flight to Vegas to see her. Yeah, Vegas was also a pretty big trope at the time. Are you two heading for Las Vegas? We're gonna score. The lady they sit yeah. next to on the flight is played by comedy legend Cloris Leachman. I love how Holy shit, really? Just Actually, I think Vegas stayed a trope and things for like the next like decade as well. I think the last film that made Vegas cool was The Hangover. I think that was it. The Casino Royale come out after that? No. I thought it was before that. Well, Casino Royale was was Montenegro. That wasn't Vegas. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, okay. Never mind. Um, but yeah, no, there was Rainbow Six Vegas that came out in like the PS3 era. Yeah, that was, that was like 2010 to 2012, I think, when, when those did, two uh, games came out. When did Fear and Loathing come out? 95, 96. So a 90s era Vegas thing. Dan, one word. I'm mostly gonna be doing the slots. They have a lot of slots in Las Vegas. You won't know where to begin. Whoa. <laughs> in a strange, perverted way, it's almost wholesome. It's so nice to meet young men who are so well-mannered. Ironically, they reveal later she was talking about sluts. <laughs> nice. The old lady mishears that Beavis is tired, so she gives him a ton of her caffeine pills, resulting in hijinks that wouldn't fly in a plane then, and let's just say really wouldn't fly in a plane now. <laughs> no, this is pre-9-11. There would have been like five federal marshals tackling their asses as soon as they stood up and just started yelling. Yeah, he would have been duct taped to the ceiling really quickly. Yes. <laughs> Ow. I am Cornwallio! <laughs> I am Cornwallio! <laughs> For me, just the 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 non sequitur that leads to that, that literally is just like all like dead silent. Then all of a sudden, just focus the front of the plane. Just like I am Cornholio, 
It was so good. The juxtaposition was perfect. I need picada for my bunghole. Are you threatening me? My bunghole will not wait. When we're all on duct tape later. <laughs> yeah, that's literally what you said. <laughs> yep. One bloodstained window later. They eventually land confusing the limo driver for a blind man and... <laughs> I guess that's not our worthy because butts in his name. I don't know. And they realize the ride is for them. B A B A V B A B B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B A B so right. Over there, the door marked pirate. I see a door marked private. <laughs> yeah. Just like, everything's going to Pepe Sylvia, Pepe Sylvia. It's like, Pepe Sylvia. You mean Philadelphia? Because that's what people don't get. That's what, a lot of people are just like, where the hell did he get Pepe Sylvia from? It's like, Pennsylvania. It's Charlie's dyslexia. The dude literally is just... <laughs> Like, he would look at this shirt right here. So every morning when we open, I go in and I turn on the bright Coors sign so that people can see we got ice cold Coors. That sign does not say Coors. Come outside. Come outside. Close, Charlie. It says close. It's like, well, yeah, it's kind of hard to read from the... You can't read it from the outside. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it so much. Yeah. Your illiteracy has screwed us once again. Yeah. Like he'd read the Beavis' shirt as me, as a medical as medical. Yeah, uh, pr prize. Uh, he put the bar up as the prize because he saw that it said pride. So he's like, "Yeah, I'm proud of the bar." He's like, "It's prize, Charlie. You put the bar up for the prize. Your literacy has screwed us once again." Jeez. We want. And we don't have to worry about the police. What's that Hannibal Lecter line? The world's more interesting with them in it. <laughs> yes. Back at the motel, Muddy discovers the true assassins, who are also the guys who stole the TV. It's clever tie-in. And he's so pissed, he decides to do the job himself. Just leave it, worthless piece of crap. It's good seeing what Bobby Hill eventually grew up into. Oh, <laughs> tell me you couldn't Damn. see that. I, wow. I can't believe that. That's actually, it's eerie. They may get to Las Vegas with all the lights, glamour, and riches, but the only place they want to go is in front of a statue's boobuses. <laughs> also, also the Red Hot Chili Peppers cover of Love Roller Coaster here is fire. If you all have never heard that cover of it, dude, so good. Ass would have gotten an R, but I want... this... We'll just assume this is like YouTube's content control. Nobody's actually I want watching. That coast up, baby, baby. Like the hit song Love Roller Coaster, which was written specifically for this movie. Though I have to admit, it was weird seeing the music video, seeing the Red Hot Chili Peppers sing, only to find the singers in the movie look not like them. Yeah. Um, hold on. Need to make sure I heard that right. Only watching. They play the hit song Love Roller Coaster, which was written specifically for this movie. The Ohio players wrote Love Roller Coaster back in the 1970s, Doug. He might mean the cover was written specifically for the movie. Yeah. Yeah, it was written in 1975. But the cover was issued just for this song, just for this movie. It's probably what he meant. Yeah. Just, just a little kerfuffle on that. Though I have to admit, it was weird seeing the music video. Seeing the also, this is this is. <laughs> I'm sorry to keep pausing, but just Jesus Christ, this is this was the weird era of Red Hot Chili Peppers. This was after uh, John Frusciante left, and in and in uh, his place was uh, Dave Navarro from Jane's Addiction. I. And for the life of me, I still can't believe Dave Navarro was part of the Red Hot Chili Peppers. I still can't. The Red Hot Chili Peppers sing only to find the singers in the movie look not like them. That's 
Stein. Stein. He could be sung by Ben Stein as the wedding singer, but I wouldn't think they'd have a random CG shot in here either. <laughs> Yeah, I think that was like a weird requirement in hand-drawn films at the time. Like every flick had to have at least one CG shot. Yeah. Like, because I swear it's almost working in reverse nowadays. <laughs> they get to their rooms and stumble across their target named Dallas, played by Demi Moore. I'll double it. I'll pay you 20 if you go back there and do him. You want us to do a guy? Maybe if we close our eyes and pretend he's a chick. <laughs> Don't spoil the sequel. Oh no. I can't believe that Doug brought that up. <laughs> yes, that's a real thing. I wish it wasn't. <sighs> She's one of the few people that puts together these two are dumbasses, but once she sees the police are on their way, she puts the government MacGuffin in Beavis's pants and tells them to meet her in Washington, D.C. via bus tour. I want you to take the bus to Washington, D.C. You're gonna make a whole lot of money. And I'm gonna give you everything. Including the strategy guide to your own game. Seriously, there's no way to beat this game without it. That's true. A game was impossible. Hey, I'm giving a shout out hey. to one of my favorite members of the Channel Awesome crew, Buster. Hey. I do half the things I do without Buster. What about Chaplin? Come on. Buster, the most photogenic cat that loves to be filmed. Look at that. Look how much he loves it. Because when every person and or cat moment and penny counts in your business, you can't afford to take any of them for granted. Stamps.com gets <laughs> yeah. that because for the last Cute 25 kitty. years he's they've been helping boy. businesses. Yes, he is. And, and he's the anti-Vega. Vega, whenever a camera's on, Vega's like, Ew! gone. Well, he'll let you take his picture, but he doesn't like to be recorded. No. He, he thinks that video camera still kitty slow. Oh, Jesus. But he's fine, with, he's fine with still... still I photos. might be selfish to talk he's pretty about photogenic, my actually. a valuable member of the team when I have plenty of other people. It's almost like I got sick this week and I had to push back a shoot and this is the best I could do under the circumstances. That's not at all. That was a completely random scenario I just threw out. Buster's the best. And Stamps knows that. They oh, we know Buster's the best. Business, it's knowing that Stamps.com has all your postage needs covered with premium discounts and great rates. My God, will you hold still for just a second while you're never in videos. With Stamps.com, all you need is a computer and printer. They even send you a free scale so you'll have everything you need to get started. If you need a package pickup, you can easily schedule it through your Stamps.com dashboard. And if you sell products online, Stamps.com seamlessly connects with every major marketplace and shopping cart. Behind the chair, huh? We're doing this? Is this how you show you love me? Well, I love you too, you little son of a buster, everybody! Running a business is a shit. cat obedience school, which when it comes to fulfilling orders for your customers. Luckily, Stamps.com has huge carrier discounts, up to 84% off USPS and UPS rates. Plus, Stamps.com automatically tells you your cheapest Stamps. and fastest shipping options. Oh, are you gracing us with your presence, Your Majesty? Aww, Thank you. You can go over there, just baby. anywhere away from the camera. That's what I want you to do. Brilliant. For 25 years, Stamps.com has been... <laughs> yeah, it's just like every time... I remember whenever me and Mom were down here back when I back when Mom used to own the house and I used to just record down here? Um, her cats would come down here. Juno would come down here. And Juno would, like, hop up on the back of the couch... I would like be rubbing up against us and everything, and then Juno would just like turn her butt towards the camera, as if be like, "Look at it, look at my butthole." <laughs> An indispensable for over one million businesses. Get access to USPS and UPS services you need right from your computer anytime, day or night. No lines, no traffic, no waiting. Okay, this is nice. You're like rubbing up against my hand. That's that's yeah. cute. Okay, we can work with this. This is all right. You want There's to know a cute about the baby. Special deal buster? Of course you don't, because you're the worst. Set up your business oh, for success come on, when you can start with Stamps.com today. <clears throat> Sign up at Stamps.com slash Nostalgia for a special offer that includes a four-week free trial, plus free postage, and a free digital scale. No long-term commitments or contracts. Just go to Stamps.com slash Nostalgia. All right, stop it. Stop it. It is not to... Why do you have to be this way? I think I hate Buster. Uh, no. No, you don't. He's too fluffy to hate. Doug, don't say that. Buster's a sweet baby. That's a good way to do an ad, though. Yes, it is. The kitty kept me interested. <coughs> Doug plays God of War for the first time every Friday on Twitch. We also have yeah. five days a week. Hope to see you there.
Gibbs and Butthead get to the bus, the FBI, led by Agent Fleming, played by Robert Stack, who felt so duped into doing this movie he tried to get his legal team to remove him from it, but he warmed up to it over the years, confront Dallas, discovering she has nothing. So, are you gonna tell us where it is, or am I gonna have to have Agent Hurley over there give you another cavity search? This will be one of the funniest running jokes in the movie. It is. It is, hands down, one of the... Because, <laughs> you, know, you know, eventually every interaction with him is going to end with, you want her to give you a cavity search? And it's like, it doesn't matter which character it is, you just know. Actually, I love the one that he does later. He's just like, like cavity search, sir, don't stop until you feel teeth. <laughs> it's like, oh, Jesus. Everything about this character is straight lace, no humor, all serious, except for this one phenomenally bizarre character trait. Did you give him a full cavity search? I want full cavity searches. Full cavity searches all around. Get this I got cavity search. Bork. Cavity search. Deep and hard. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine why Stack would want his name removed from this. Oh, come on. By the Hoover Dam, where they push all the buttons messing with the city's power, releases some of the water, and worst of all, makes a damn pun. Is this a goddamn... <laughs> 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 face it just makes it even funnier <coughs> just like he's cracking himself up <laughs> i'll be your damn guide now now i'm gonna take you on the damn tour now does anybody have any damn questions yeah where do you get some damn bait i'm going fishing <laughs> God damn, you know. piss off i think it's funny it is they get back on the bus just as the fbi wrongly deduces they cut the power on purpose to cover their tracks Okay, people. So right now, these are the most dangerous men in America. Uh, Mr. Stack, could you say that a bit more trailery? I say everything trailery. Oh, that's true, he does. Yes. They continue across America, ignoring all the amazing sights, and instead paying attention to the stupidest things they can find. They accidentally <laughs> get on the wrong bus, though, teaming up with a group of nuns. We're on a bus with chicks. Funny enough, the most hilarious scene doesn't come with them, though. He said... No, I didn't. Where they confuse confessionals for porta-potties. I gotta take a dump. Surprisingly, maybe even thankfully, it doesn't go that route. But it does result in the two of them being mistaken for priests. Leading to, in my opinion, the funniest lines. How many Hail Marys? A thousand. I slept with a woman, and, uh... Could you, like, see her boobs? <laughs> <laughs> You know, with some churches nowadays, I could see some priests saying that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Unfortunately. God dang it, what is it with that? I mean, dude, Jerry Falwell and his son, and then not only that, it, it, oh gosh. Oh, I, there's so many, there's so, there's so many bullshit like that, so much bullshit like that. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, I expected that. <laughs> In the 2000s, that's what people thought was going to happen if you didn't see Passion of the Christ. Incorrect. Incorrect, but... Eh. Also, that was 2003, wasn't it? But that is the kind of thing my mom thought would happen if you like were too blasphemous or whatever, you know? <laughs> so... Well, it's appropriate to that. Well, here's the thing with it. God has a sense of humor. I mean, I mean, honestly, you, you know God has a sense of humor because look at the duck-billed platypus. And God also is a cruel bastard because Kim Kardashian exists. But anyway. Well, if, if you were to use the logic that God created everything, he also created comedy. So. Exactly. He created our ability to laugh at things. So. Yes. Too bad about the nuns not getting the biggest laugh in the movie, though. They have a hilarious scene where they just abandon the two of them at a pit stop. They leave that to Sandy thing. They're just all on the same page. Hey, where'd those chicks go? I didn't even get to see if there's a black one, like in Sister Act. Oh, wait, there was. There was, but yeah. There really was for that reason. <laughs> the boys stupidly decide to walk to Washington, getting lost in the desert, but randomly stumbling across their fathers, who, of course, they don't recognize. 
One of them is voiced by Earl Hoffert, or as translated in Jokey's, David Letterman. Here's a story. I scored with these two chicks. True story. <laughs> well, I'm gonna call DCFS after seeing how he treats his son. What are you laughing at? <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, the agents go to every place Beavis and Butthead could be, including their school. Come with me, lesbian seagull. Again, I don't think they had all the characters figured out yet because, by God, Daria would not be in that class listening to that song. No, she would not. Jane? Maybe. Yes. I can definitely see Jane. After, let's face it, a pretty delayed fart joke when you think about what movie you're watching. Boys <laughs> lose track of their fathers and continue to roam the desert, eat some cactus, and start to hallucinate. It's like a music video! It'll quench you. This is another one of those tropes at the it's time the when everything connected to the plot would just disappear in lieu of a pretty pointless music video. But seeing how they never looked over music videos in this, I think it deserves a pass. Yeah. The segment is pretty awesome. Drawing inspiration yes. from a lot of Rob Zombie's artwork. It's Hell one of yeah. It's in the movie where you can say the animation is not only good, it's goddamn great. Yes. <laughs> It probably portrays, like, you on peyote, especially when you're dehydrated and haven't had anything to eat for, like, three days. Yes, it's a segment you could cut and miss nothing, but it does serve maybe the most as a time capsule. I just look at this, think late 90s, and appreciate the hell out of it. Yes. Oh, God! <laughs> he drank too much cactus juice. Muddy wakes them up and takes them hostage, tossing them in the trunk of his car. They manage to get out and, of course, cause a- Cut. Okay. No, you, you missed the point. Okay, I guess it wouldn't really be that much of a miss Muddy on takes it. them hostage, tossing but... them in the trunk of his car. They... Hey, Beaveth, look, I'm jacking. Uh, uh. Manage to get out and, of course, cause a lot of damage while doing so. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> I think I figured out why a crossover between these three shows never happened. <coughs> she wouldn't stick around and he wouldn't survive. They just happened to bump into the same bus tour they took before and they finally make their way to DC. Muddy meets Dallas there too, but she convinces him she still has feelings just as they're discovered. Me and my wife are back together and you will never... He stole the unit. Why, you damn little... I like these two and they're going through a lot. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Beavis and Butthead are about to leave, but Beavis is pissed he didn't score and attempts to make a big speech about it. I'm sick and tired of this! And we're never gonna score! It's just not gonna happen! And we're never gonna score! We're never gonna score! Ah, the big speech every YouTuber thinks they're not gonna make. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, we got to fix that. He tries to calm down by having more of the old lady's medicine, once again causing him to go full cornholio. Yes, Mr. President. I am Cornholio. My bunghole, it goes... Admit it, you know at least two presidents have made a call like that. <laughs> yep. You could throw Clinton in there, too. Especially if the phone fell off the, the hook while he was getting a blowjob from Lewinsky. But Ed stumbles across Chelsea Clinton and doesn't exactly make the best impression. I noticed you have braces. I have braces too. <laughs> you know, at least two presidents have been thrown out of the White House like that. <laughs> but Ed is arrested and given, you guessed it, cavity search. I'm talking Roto Rooter. Don't stop till you reach the back of his teeth. <laughs> <laughs> yes! Ah, thank you for including that one, Doug. Thank you, that's probably one of my favorites. Okay, don't run the third act. God dang it, will you stop it? When Beavis gets inspired to jerk off in Tom's camper, Tom throws his pants out, not aware the unit is inside. He said, Yes, I did, and it flies out. He <laughs> said, Yes, god damn it, bouncing off of Butthead's hair. Take him away. Hey, get your damn hands off me! Oh no. That look <laughs> on his wife might be the saddest thing ever drawn. Yeah. <laughs> oh. So. Tom's arrested, and naturally, Beavis and Butthead are praised as heroes, allowing them to meet the president. You exemplify a new crop of young Americans who will grow... They even got his hand gesture right, dude. I didn't notice that. Because, mm -hmm. you see, some presidents point, some presidents do like the hand out like this. 
Clinton always did this. He always, like, his thumb on his index finger, these three fingers curled up, and he would always gesture like this. It don't know what it, it don't know why, but it, it just felt more, it wasn't like assertive, like a point, or more like, like you were being pandered to with hands. Instead, it was like just this, just like he was talking to you, but not trying to be authoritative. I don't know, it's weird. Into the leaders of this great country. Duck yeah, not wrong. <laughs> they get back home and are reunited with their true love, TV. Do you think we're ever gonna score? I probably will, but not you. <laughs> You're too much of a butt monkey. Powerful words. Randomly vulgar, but vulgarly random. Yes. And that was Beavis and Butthead do America. Okay, am I gonna pretend this is a great work of modern art? No, but it is funny. It's a type of comedy many adults saw as lowbrow and beneath them, but I think it's kind of like the cable guy. The more people realize folks like this kind of exist, the more it made sense why the humor was so lowbrow and beneath them. It's cool seeing a show that so many look down on not only get a movie, but a movie that was both a box office and critical success. It isn't just something that only worked in the 90s, Beavis and Butthead came back, and a lot of people were shocked just how well the same type of humor worked today. The movie is similar. I still haven't seen the new one. Dated. It's pretty good. I will say this: it, you can definitely feel the age a little bit, but for the situations they put them in, it mostly works. I'd say it works about, I'd say eighty to eighty-five percent of the time. It's straightforward, with very little having to be explained, and it's still funny as hell. In a time where so many anime films seem to always need to be about something important, here's an anime a comedy that isn't doing anything important, which in a funny way, can also be important. Sometimes all you need is a good laugh. I mean, that's the whole premise they set there. up in the first episode of King of the Hill, you know? That's kind of what Mike Judge makes. He just shows about nothing. It's yeah. The first episode of King of the Hill, they're talking about, like, did y'all see the new Seinfeld last night? It's like, oh, dang, I missed it. And it's like, I'll tell you what, man, we do. Take all this, you know, Jordan talking about an indigent Ben Kramer to come sliding in there. Just to tell you what, man, them dang old New York boys, just a show about nothing. <laughs> it's like, cuts to the King of the Hill title screen. Yeah. It's just the Texas boys show about nothing, you know, but it's great. Yes, it is. <laughs> to get their chuckle. Nostalgia critic guy, remember it so you don't have to. Lesbian seagull. A <laughs> good one to end it on there, Doug. Uh, oh, yeah. Charity shout out. <coughs> so, yeah, that was Beavis and Butthead Do America. Uh, by the, or the review by the Nostalgia Critic. Gosh, dude, I, I love this film. What is there to say about it? I, I love this film. I want to. I love watching this film. It still makes me laugh, even almost thirty years later. Oh my god! Oh, I'm old, Yusuke. You ain't kidding. I was eight years old when this film came out. That's oh. <laughs> God. To, uh, one of my friends talking Discord last night. Uh oh. Something about their mom. And I was like, yes, I know she's old. She's 41. And I was like, your mom's six years older than me. <laughs> what did he say? He was just like, damn. <laughs> <laughs> You see, it's like it, people who are of legal age to like buy like cigarettes and shit have parents who are almost the same age as me. I'm just like, yeah. Fuck, I'm old. <laughs> well, it's like, oh god, it's like Rylan. Rylan is going. Rylan is, gosh, he's gonna start driving soon. I was there when that when that little shit was born. I love I love you, Rylan. By the way, you know my nephew. By the way, who. He's been on the channel before. He wants to come back on here. <clears throat> also, there's other... Like, during Christmas break, we might be visited by several members of my extended family from my sister. And some of them are tolerable. 
Others are just downright impossible. But I love them all the same. Maybe you'll see them when they when they show up. <clears throat> but yeah, it's like I hear these kids talking nowadays. Be like, be like, wow, you know, I was, you know, I was talking to this, this person the other day. Yeah, they were twenty, and they were talking about stuff. And I was just, I just couldn't help but just thinking about how old they were. Like they were twenty, and I'm like, <laughs> I'm thirty five. I'm thirty fucking five. God, and it it just never ceases to to amaze me and just like how the how younger people view age. Whereas I look at them and I think, you know, it wasn't too long ago when I was in your shoes. And then I realize, oh shit, it was a long time ago when I was in their shoes. Oh god. So, there's just some things I'm always going to find funny. Beavis and Butthead, I'm always going to find funny. I can't help it. It's just it's just how I feel. But, <coughs> anyway, I think that's going to do it. So, this was Beavis and Butthead, Do America, by The Nostalgia Critic. If y'all want to see more from The Nostalgia Critic, I guess you can click the Channel Awesome name in the title of the video. And until next time, I'm Nate. And we need TP for our bunghole.